Hi, I'm Brian Howard, Features Editor at Philly Mag. I want to thank you for joining us for Philadelphia Magazine's Power Talks. Also, a special thank you to Homestead Smart Health Plans, our sponsor for this series. Today, Philadelphia Magazine senior reporter Victor Fiorillo will be sitting down with Fox 29's Good Day Philadelphia co-host Alex Holly to discuss what it's like covering the news during a year like we've never seen before. We hope you enjoy the conversation, and now I'm going to turn it over to Victor. Thanks, Brian, and welcome to Philly Mag's Power Talks uh, series. Uh, I am Victor Fiorillo, and this is the final installment of Philly Mag's Power Talks. And we definitely save the best for last. Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody, please welcome Fox 29 anchor extraordinaire, Alex Holly. You flatter me. Oh, my goodness. This is a lot of pressure to be the grand finale here, but I'll try and live up to it. You'll have no problem doing it. Um, I think if we did this uh, interview last week, um, I might have led with a different question, but now I have to ask you, where were you on Saturday when you heard the news that the election had been called, and uh, how did you spend your Saturday? Um, I was at home, um, and I basically, my phone started going off, and I started getting all these text messages, and um, I turned on the TV. And I wanted to see and hear what was going on and what was happening because we'd already been in limbo for days. And um, especially working in this business, it had been a long couple of days. So I was like, is it really over? Like, really? Could it be? Um, and then once I started to see the reports and what people were saying and the numbers, I was like, well, I started to hear things going on outside. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to go outside. I want to see what the city is doing. Obviously, there's things that are happening. And I said, let me just throw something on. So I literally threw on like a T-shirt and had leggings on. And I ran outside. And I probably didn't get back home until late that night because there was so much happening. And it's not that I was taking a particular side. It was more about I, when it comes to my reporting and when it comes to my anchoring and doing the show, I feel if I'm able to see with my own eyes what's happening, that's the best way to do it. Because that way I know for a fact this was the vibe. This is what was going on. I saw it with my own eyes. And so I wanted to make sure that I had that firsthand knowledge. So I just went for a walk and I started walking through different parts of the city and recording and ca catching different things that I saw that was happening and just making sure I could get that feel and feel what Philly was feeling at the moment because all eyes were on Philly. And you said it's been, uh, it had been a long couple of days last week, but really in your business and my business, it's been a long several months. Um, at any point in 2020, did you say to yourself, this is definitely not the job that I signed up for? I would have to say it's been, the whole of 2020 <laughs> has really been tough, if I'm being honest. It's really been tough. And um I think a lot of people are saying in their different uh, fields that, hey, this is not really what I signed up for. This is not what I thought it would be. Uh, but I know that I love doing this job and it is what I want to do. Um, it's all I know how to do. <laughs> it's what I went to school for. Um, so it's never been a thing of, hey, it's not what I signed up for. It's more, how can I adjust? How can I make this work? How can I still do this and, and still feel the same way? Not uh, wrong. You started the pandemic quarantined at home and broadcasting from home. Is that right? I did. I did. I actually have a, still have a full studio set up in the middle of my living room slash dining room. And I don't think it's leaving anytime soon. Right. Uh, nowadays, you're back in the office. And, you know, how did you make that decision of when to come back to the newsroom, to the news desk? Actually, it wasn't completely up to me. The managers here at Fox 29 felt like um, around the time of the George Floyd protests and what was happening in the city at that point, that it was really important that they had both of their morning anchors in the studio together, socially distant, but together so we could work and have all the tools that we need to report the news in the best way that we can, because it's that much of an important story. And I wanted to make sure I had all the tools that I needed and I wanted to be there. And um, so that's the reason why I came back. And since then, I've been back. Thank you. And you know, during the pandemic and the rest of 2020, with you mentioned the George Floyd unrest and, of course, the election, it's been stressful. And for somebody in your position, I can only imagine that it's uh, even a different level of stress than uh, some of us. And because of the fast paced nature of the news and your job and your public persona, 
we've been talking a lot in 2020 about self-care and I'm wondering what your routine is for self-care. How do you do this job without losing your sanity? Um, how do you keep up with it? Yeah, I think it's interesting the conversations that people have had about self-care. I love that it's now in the forefront of people's minds and it's starting to become a thing that people are leaning into. Uh, but the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of times that people are putting out there, take a break from the news or step back. And I don't really have that luxury. Uh, so I definitely, while I was reading and learning more about self-care, I had to pivot and find what works best for me while I'm still able to research for my job and stay on top of the news. Because I do feel like in 2020, if I put my phone down for more than five minutes, I'm going to miss something. So I do have to stay um, basically in tune with everything that's happening. But I found other ways. In the height of quarantine, when everything was on lockdown, uh, I decided to take an online course. Um, Coursera, they offer these great free online courses. And I took one called The Science of Wellbeing. It's by Dr. Lori Santos. And um, in it, it was really cool because it talked about how the well-being and happiness and emotional well-being is really something you have to work toward every single day. And you should identify for you, because it's different things for different people, what it takes to keep you in a good mental space and emotional space. And you have to work toward that and actively work toward it every day. Um, so it really was an exciting course. And I think once I took that, everything kind of shifted for me and I started to take it and all this differently. Um, and it made me realize the things that I need to do in order to just kind of stay being me and be able to do the job that I do. Because the hard part is, I think Good Day is known for, we give you the news, but we also put a smile on your face. And that has been very important to me. And it's one of the things I love about this job and what I do. Um, and it's certainly been harder to do that um, in 2020, to do it in an appropriate way. Uh, because some mornings it's, it's a lot harder to smile or to laugh. Uh, so finding that balance and still doing that. So, it's been an adjustment. So you took that course, and it sounds like a course I could really use. Uh, did you also learn to bake bread or anything fun like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can take it. Actually, Coursera is all kinds of free. And it was a course at Yale. So I was like, oh, look at this. An Ivy League course for free. Sign me up. And I challenged my parents to do it. So they actually did it with me. My mom finished it, and I did as well. My dad dropped out. He was like, okay, I'll have to do this another time. <laughs> but he hung in there for a little bit. Um, so I did that, and that took up a lot of time. But I also did cooking. You kind of had to when everything was shut down. <laughs> so um, I sometimes would cook, I admit, not as much as my mother probably would like. But once I had to, I just found, like, the love in it. And I enjoyed doing it, and I had fun with it, trying different recipes, and even became a segment on the show. And we got to Quarantine Cuisine is what we called it. And I had a lot of fun. You mentioned your parents, and I had the pleasure of meeting them uh, a couple of years ago at Citizens Bank Park with you. Um, how have they fared during the pandemic? Are they holding up okay? That is so sweet of you to ask. They are doing well, and I know that is a blessing to be able to say that um, in these times. Uh, my grandpa as well. A lot of folks still ask about him. I think the hardest part, um, in addition to the way our lives have changed, is not being able to see each other. I think folks who know me know that my parents are up here a lot. <laughs> and I love it. Philly is like their second home. They love Philly. They love coming all the time. So it's been interesting uh, trying to adjust and still be connected with them, even though they're thousands of miles away. But in a strange turn, because all we have is video chat and the phone, we kind of gotten closer because it forces you to talk. It forces you to talk with your loved ones and like, focus on the conversation and getting to know each other more and checking in on each other, as opposed to when you're visiting, you can get lost in doing activities and other things. You may not be able to catch up as much. So even though they are far away and I miss them dearly, we are so close. And I check in with grandpa almost every day. Will you be doing a uh, virtual Christmas and Thanksgiving with them? I did virtual Easter and we made that happen. And it's looking like, yeah, it's gonna have to be virtual Thanksgiving and virtual Christmas and all that. Um, so it's definitely gonna be different and an adjustment. Um, but I, like I said, I'm grateful that we have been blessed to be healthy and still be okay through all this. So I will take it. I certainly will take it. So I wanted to pivot to talk a little bit about the reason that you're here, uh, the timing of it, is that of course you are uh, in the brand new issue of Philadelphia Magazine which is on newsstands now, although I hear it's sold out everywhere. 
Um, you are one of the 76 most influential Philadelphians this year. Um, it's, a, it's a big change for us, uh, this package. We do a power package, which this essentially is every so many years. Um, and, and this year, we felt that power had really been redefined. Um, and you, as somebody who hosts a huge news show every morning and has a huge public persona, um, I'm wondering first what you thought of uh, landing on the list and then also what responsibilities come with that power that you wield? Well, first I wanna say um, it's a great honor, um, especially when you look at everyone who's on the list. I'm like, me, really? How did I get on there? Um, it's a great honor. Uh, my boss was the one who called me to tell me. He was really excited. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Because I know uh, my journey to Philly has been a short one compared to others. I've been here about six years. And I've, from the moment I got here, my slogan was fallen for Philly. And it has definitely been that. I've been falling in love since. And it's been an amazing time. So the fact that Philly feels this way about me, it, it's just, it's amazing. And I, I take it, um, I don't take it lightly at all. And I think it's, like you mentioned, it is a great responsibility as well. Um, I'll tell you that I am, I never watched morning TV news uh, in my life until this past March. And I'm not trying to flatter you or the station, but literally every morning, 7 a.m., my TV would go on and I would see what the heck is going on in the city. So with that power uh, that you do have um, comes, you know, what, what responsibilities does that come with to you? It, it can be heavy at times and also difficult during this time period because I think, especially in 2020, tensions have been high. People have very strong opinions when it comes to um, politics and other topics. So it's definitely been a challenge. And also the thing about 2020 nowadays, when people feel strongly they want you to know that they feel strongly. So they voice all of those things. And I take my position very seriously and I do take it as a responsibility. And I struggle with that sometimes because, because there's so many strong opinions, you're never gonna be right to everyone. And I think that definitely changed when 2020 hit um, that reality. And I think what I've, I've had to realize um, that at the end of the day, everyone is going to have an opinion or a judgment. And so all I can do, really two things. One, do my job to the best of my ability. That's make sure I'm trying to be as accurate as possible, make sure I research as much as possible, make sure I know all the information. And then two is be myself. Because if no matter what I do, someone's going to have some sort of opinion, then at the end of the day, at least I can say, look, I'm just being me. I'm just, you know, doing what I do. And as long as it sits well with me and I feel like I'm sticking to my values, then that's all I can say. Uh, and so that's something that I've been working on accepting and, and working through that as long as you are yourself, um, the rest of the noise, it shouldn't affect you as much. Uh, so it's really those two things, knowing your responsibility to, to do your job in the best way that you can. And also at the same time, being yourself and sticking to your core values. So, uh, Alex, I wanted to know, I know you've had time to read through the uh, 76 most influential people that you appear in, and I wanted to know, are there people in there that you were happy to see on that list? For sure, for sure. There were so many people, but one person I really want to point out is Dr. Stanford. I know she's a surgeon with her own medical practice, but she founded the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium, and she basically did so much work during this pandemic. She's been on the front lines making sure that a group of people who are mostly affected by COVID, the African-American community, that they have access to testing, that they have access to information to keep themselves safe, and that they know all that they need to know. And it's just admirable what she's been doing. And it's great to see and such a great example for others. So I definitely love the work that she's doing. And also, I love seeing all the women on the list. Uh, I, I went through and I was counting because I wanted to see. And it's about 33 
not just women one by one, but at least involved in the different groups that are named on the list. And I think it's important to show that women are doing amazing things in this city and they've really led some great causes. And I hope that inspires other women. And I think it's great that it uplifts the people in the city and what they're doing and hopefully will encourage them and others to support their different causes. So it really has been great to see all the women in Philadelphia, because it's not just city of brotherly love, it's also sisterly affection. So we love that um, we're shedding light on the women. So Alex, just between me and you and everybody else, of course, watching, um, was Mike Jarek jealous that he didn't make the list this year? <laughs> it's so funny because he did bring it up on air and he mentioned that he picked it up and he was looking for his name on the list and he was confused that he didn't see it. Uh, but he was very sweet and uh, congratulatory. So it was nice of him, but he is a legend in Philly. He's always been a legend and it's an honor to work with him. Uh, I've learned so much from him and he's embraced me from the moment that I stepped foot in Philadelphia and he's a mentor. He's a coworker. He's a wingman. He's a friend. He's so much, and I love him dearly. I know Philly loves him dearly, so he's always on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell him there's always 2025. We'll do it again in another five years. <laughs> Listen, Alex, I want to thank you uh, so much for doing this Power Talk. All of the Power Talks are accessible via Philly Mag's website at phillymag.com. I also wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Homestead Smart Health Plans. Uh, again, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, you're a true treasure to the city. Thank you. This is so, so much of an honor. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate Philly just embracing me and giving me a chance. <laughs> I do love this city and I love it here. And I think 2020 has been something, but I believe that we're getting through it and we're doing what we have to do. So I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, Victor. Uh, it's so nice to at least see you virtually and to do this. <laughs> All right, and now we'll all get back to work. <laughs>